All right, welcome everybody to Babecraft Studio Live. Today we're going to be making a fall napkin decoupage notebook with Eileen Hull. My name is Dana. I'm the editor of Fave Crafts, and I will be emceeing today's class. Uh, if you're not familiar with Fave Crafts, we're a website that shares free craft tutorials from all over the internet. We have a variety of free email newsletters that are broken down by interests like everyday crochet and trash to treasure and more. And you can sign up for any of those newsletters at favecrafts.com. A few housekeeping items. We are recording the class today and you'll get a copy of that recording in your email tomorrow in about 24 hours. So keep an eye out for an email from Favecrafts via Zoom with that link to the recording so you can rewatch anytime. And then use the Q&A feature or the webinar chat to ask questions. I'll be monitoring both of those throughout today's uh, webinar. All right. And then I would like to thank our instructor and sponsor for today's class. So thank you so much, Eileen Hull. Eileen is a big fan of 3D dyes and licensed, and she's a licensed artist for Sizzix, one of the leading craft dye manufac manufacturers in the world, excuse me. Learn more about Eileen and connect with her at EileenHull.com and on Etsy, Facebook, and YouTube. And I'm going to drop all of those links to Eileen's website and social media in the chat once we get started. Um, this slide here just has a few of the beautiful projects Eileen has featured on her website, so you can go to her site for even more inspiration. And then a bit more about Eileen before we get started. Eileen grew up in a large family where there was always an art project in the works. Learning to think creatively has been a huge benefit throughout her life, from 13 military moves and raising four children to developing product lines for craft manufacturers. Mat board was always one of her favorite materials to work with. As she started focusing on exploring all of its magical qualities, she discovered that with some strategic scoring, folding and cutting, she could create boxes, books and folders that were really sturdy and quite addicting. She started thinking a die cut manufacturer should make a die that could cut and score thick materials like mat board. She approached Sizzix and they agreed that this did sound pretty interesting. Next thing you know, her signature line of scoreboards dies were launched back in 2009. Today we'll see some of Eileen's dies at work. Well, at least one of Eileen's dies at work as we make today's project. Welcome Eileen, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Dana. I'm so excited to come and uh, meet some of your uh, your friends that are online watching. And uh, if you haven't seen how these dyes work before, um, then you will get to see it today. So um, what I did was I brought a couple samples to just to show uh, how what it's going to look like. Uh, well, this is the book that I'm going to make today. And um, if I don't finish today, I'm going to finish today, uh, uh, later today on my site, Eileen Hull Designs, and on YouTube, and we will finish this off. So I'm not sure because we have drying time and things like that. So, um, but this is the book that we're going to make today. These dies, these are scoreboards dies, and they go together so quickly. Um, very easy to make if you want to uh, sell them or give them as gifts and you want to you know make a couple at a time the dies really help speed that along of course if you don't have a die cut machine and you you could even do this with like chipboard from the back of a um you know a notepad or something or cereal boxes uh it just makes it a lot easier and more precise if you use the dies so hey everybody hi ida um yeah, good to see everybody. It's so nice. I see some people I know and people I don't know. So um, Dana, should I just get going? Do you think? Ready to go? Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. I can uh, spotlight your hands if, if that's... Okay, um, let me just talk a little bit first about what we're going to use. Um, and there's one thing that I added to the list that I'm going to use today just because in the interest of time, it'll help things go along quicker. But um, first of all, what I like to do is I like to decoupage with two layers. So I like to have a background of text and then I add napkins on top of that. And it's cool because you can see through them. So it looks like uh, like a paper that you kind of designed. So um, if you see the cover here, that's how we got that effect. 
the the color image is a napkin and then these are like book pages or you could use uh you know music sheets old vintage things and i like to collect them when i go to yard sales and things like that so it gives me something to look for and it's just fun so i have for example some old dictionaries and i like to get large and small i really like the ones that have kind of antique edges to it and i add them in because it gives more uh, color and dimension um, here's one I got from my dad's house when I was cleaning it out. Uh, this is an old dictionary. And these, you can get tons and tons of paper uh, from that, you know, and they give them out free sometimes. So um, that those are some of the things that I've collected. These are uh, the products that I'm going to use. This is called the pocket notebook. If you have any dies, you can use this technique on them. Or like I said, if you don't even have dies and you just want to try the technique, you can do it even on like um, a soup can or I don't know what that was. It's pretty big, but I put my extra ribbon in there. So it's just kind of a collaging process. So we're going to do it on the cover of a journal, but you can see how easy it would be to do it on anything really. Um, for the die, we're going to use the extended cutting pads because this is a, a big die, it's long, so it will not fit on your standard Sizzix machine, uh, so you might need the extra long. Actually, I'm looking at this one. This one might work. It depends on the length of the die, so you'll see in a minute when we look at that. Um, this is my base material that I'm going to work on. So one of the features of scoreboards dies they were designed to work with thick material, mat board, chip board, leather, uh, you can cut metal, you know, all kinds of heavy duty materials. So I like to use a nice strong base and I use the mat board from Sizzix. I like this because it'll fit through my die cutting machine. And this is six by 13 inches long. So it's easy for those 12 inch papers. You know, you can cut them in half and cover your mat board with that. So I'm gonna show you how we do that today. Um, this is the extra thing that did not go on the class list. This is easy cut adhesive, and I'm going to adhere my first layer down the uh, text paper with that just to speed along, because otherwise I'd have to wait for it to dry, and you wouldn't be able to see it. And the last thing that I want to show you are the napkins. And these are a set that are in my Etsy store. These are all kind of... Um, fall images so we can look at these when we turn the camera down but we're going to be using these and i'm going to show you how to kind of get the napkin ready for um you know use so let me just move stuff around here and there are a couple more things um i'm going to be using this decoupage medium i like to use this stuff this is really good the reason i like it is because it dries um not tacky sometimes i've tried deck um, mod podge and if you use the gloss that will still have a little tack to it but if you use the matte it's um it seems to be fine and it will not stick i don't like having that so the other thing we're going to use is elastic this is black i just you know you could use any color actually i usually use white because i can dye it i can i get a big thing of white and then i can dye it any color with my inks so uh the last thing oh we're going to use this this is a little spatula to get distribute the mod podge and then these are luster waxes this is a product from sizzix and i just want to show a tip on how to do this um they come in a bunch of colors, but I've kind of brought the metallic ones because I have charms here, but they're a kind of a bright silver and I want to dull them down a little. So at the end, I'm going to add a little luster wax to kind of, you know, knock them down a little. And the last thing is this is a water brush. You could also use a, a wet paint brush, but I'll show you what we're going to do with that in a minute. So let's, uh, yeah, Dana, if you could turn it down that would be good let me all right let's see this is always the challenge let me move some stuff <laughs> there's never enough room to work don't you guys think all right here's our list of materials so you know hope you have all that stuff oh and the other thing is 
if you want to add pages, which I'm not sure we're going to get to, but I like to use the six by six paper pads. And this just seemed to go with the colors of the napkins that I've selected. So you can use any, any paper that you have. You could use 12 by 12, cut it into quarters and you're fine. So um, let's just look through these napkins because I'm trying to decide. They're so cute. I love that little guy. And one tip about choosing napkins, I like to use images that have a white background because then they kind of fade into your text. See here, you can hardly see the edges and I like that. Uh, so, but it's up to you. You could take, for example, you could take this whole image and just, you know, decoupage it on there. It's up to you. But in looking through last night, um, I love these all. And I put sunflowers. These are called Sunflowers and Pumpkins uh, Mega Nap Collection. If you go to my Etsy store, they're in here. The other thing that I like about using napkins is you have four images, you know, um, depending on the size of the napkins. Uh, you know, they cover a good bit of territory. So I think they, it's like your art is done for you. You don't have to do anything. You gotta love that. And then I think I may use this image right here. I really like that. So these are the others and it's hard to pick, but I thought, oh, bright. So those are my napkins. Now I did want to show you my die because I'm going to do something to it, which I don't do very often um, online, but this one, um, let me just show you what the die looks like. So I mentioned that it cuts in scores. Well, I don't know if I mentioned it, but it cuts in scores, this thick material. And so you can see here, these are scoreless. Now this is an older die. I have used this, I don't even know how many times. Um, but what I like to do is cover these little holes here because when you put in thick material like mat board, that's gonna stick into your die and you'll have to eventually pick that out with a die pick and I don't wanna mess with it. So what I do is I just take a little bit of fun foam and I, this had adhesive already on it. So I'm just gonna cover those areas. I had some on here and I peeled it off. That's why it looks really bad. But you know what? I use these as tools. These are, um, you know, I bought them and I wanna use them and I want them to work how they, you know, best suit me. So I don't mind kind of messing them up a little bit. And I'm gonna show you another thing that I do. Now, let me just get these. I want to cover all of them. So another thing that I do on these dies, the way this book is going to go together is you're going to cover your mat board with images, and then you're going to cut them, and then you're going to butt these spines up. In order to make the book work, you're going to have to rotate your edges so that they, you know, match up here. So you're going to have a back and a front. If you cut two fronts, when you turn it, one will be upside down. So what I do on mine is I put B and F. And then I know my if I have a text or something like that, it should be readable when I look at it here. That's the front. And when I look at it, you know, the other way, you know, this is my back. So then I know I have one of each. Anyway, <laughs> you'll understand when we get into this. So... Uh, let's get going. So here is my mat board. Now I've cut this down. On this die, we have a couple parts. Let me show you what they are. This is our cover. And really, this is what we're going to use for this project. But if you want to cut book pages, you can use this piece over here. And what is different about it is it does not have a cutting blade over here. So what you're going to do is fold your paper in half, put the fold over here, and then cut. And it will go around and it will make a page that fits inside your book. So, you know, that you don't cut out of mat board, you cut that out of paper. And then we have just like a little element over here, which is a closure. And this is kind of a pen loop. So if you want to make a journal, you have all the parts that you need right here on your die. So let me see, does anybody have questions about anything here? Hey, Amy Reagan. 
Okay, so let me just, I'm gonna do a shortcut for the first step here. And I'm gonna take my two pieces of mat board. Now, like I said, it comes in a longer sheet, but we don't need that whole big piece. So I just looked on my die, I measured out how much I needed and I cut it off. So I'm trying to save a little time here. So now I've got my adhesive. This is double-sided adhesive. And if you want are interested in this, I also have this in my Etsy store, but you can use whatever you have. Um, I don't like to use glue stick because I feel like it peels off after a while. You really need something sturdy because this is such a sturdy material that you need also strong adhesives to help it work. Um, so I am just going to cover my front and back. You could cover the inside too, if you wanted. So now, again, we're getting to it, guys. <laughs> okay, so like I said, I'm going to move this out of the way. I am going to get my book pages here. And we are actually going to make this whole project right here on the show. So we know that our, this is important to do. You want to look on your die, make sure your material covers it. And then, so we're working on the front. So we want our text going across here, okay? So let's just do one. Now, the other thing is, and I find this works a lot easier than uh, scissors. It just takes less, less time. I'm gonna put this up here so I don't accidentally stick it to something, which I have done. Now I have found, um, I have a couple scraps and I am just gonna lay these down and you might just wanna make sure, there's no bad words. This is from a Reader's Digest book and the old ones are pretty good, but you never know. So I'm just gonna take these and stick them down. Now, if you were gluing them, I'll show you that step, but right now I just really want to get these. And good lesson to learn. If you lift it up, it's not, uh, well, that one looks okay. But I try not to um, lift them up. I also do try to make them go in different directions. And I like to use this ruler because you're able to kind of hold it down and then you just tear. So you can, you know, make them go sideways or let's see, let's just put this down. I'm not really being very careful. Spindly spleen, that's interesting. <laughs> All right, let's take a strip out of here. And I'm just really filling in and trying to give it a little bit of interest by using darker paper, lighter paper by turning it. And really though, you're not gonna notice that much because this is a background. So don't worry about it, you know, just just have fun. It's really, really fun to rip the pages. So this one, I'm just gonna, let's see what side. Oh, exciting, we wanna have that. All right. Now I have, not covered this here. So what you can do is take a glue stick and if it's just a little spot, you could use glue, but this is pretty easy. I'm just gonna glue that down. And then I might just use this strip here to fill in. So it's really kind of fun, it's like a little puzzle. You're just, you know, filling in the white space. And like I said, because this is so thin, you really could do the other side too, if you wanted to add, you know, back. But for time's sake, we're just gonna do one for now. And let's do our next one. So where is my die pick? Right here. I use Eileen, um, yes. sorry to interrupt. What, what kind of ruler is that, that makes it so easy to tear? Yeah, this is, I think it's by We Are Memory Keepers. And oh, it's got a side that's metal and a side that is uh, clear. And this is centimeters and that's inches. And it also, what I like is it has this little gadget here that pushes down 
and you can see this here, and it's also nonstick. So I don't think that it's meant to be a tearing ruler, but that's what I use it for. Some people like to have like the jagged edged, um, you know, tearing ruler, but I, I don't see the difference. I mean, there's, you know, it's just, it's what, what you like. Cool. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, sure. Any other questions? I really, I'm trying to concentrate and, you know, we have a lot to do, so I, I'm not looking, but if there are questions, definitely let me know. No other questions so okay. far. All right. <laughs> All right. And I don't even really care if we'll go, you know, crooked or, you know, not that big a deal. All right. Now let's see. Maybe I thought I had some music. I guess that was just one piece. I, I don't know where my folder is. This is the back anyway. So I'm just going to kind of fill this in right like this. And this I had stamped something on here, but that's all right. It's not going to be a problem. So you can take a lot of time doing this, but let's just get it done here. So it's really, I like having a, a nice um, adhesive there because I don't have to worry about did it stick or drying up or anything. Uh, I do like to use this method. All right, so now, well, let's just leave that out. We might need. All right, so now we have our two covers. Now we're gonna cut them. So let's get our die and our machine. And in case you haven't seen a big shot before, this is a big sh big shot. Uh, works if you're right or left-handed, you just turn it around and right-handed. So I'm gonna get my cutting pads and you're gonna make your Sizzix sandwich, one on the bottom. Then you're going to put your die. Now, remember, we're going to look on here. It says F, so I want this to face the, uh, you know, this is the direction that I want my text to go. But the other thing to remember is because these are scoring blades, I want to put my right side facing down because I want my scoring uh, to go, my image to go on the front. So you'll see. One minute. <laughs> This is the best part. It's magical. I love it. I never tire of watching this, how cool it is. Because basically we're gonna have a book cover in about one minute, depending on how much I talk. <laughs> but look at that. Here's our book cover with the score lines and the holes punched. All right, so now let's rotate this around because I know for my back, I want the text going this way. All right, so I'm going to turn that over and we're going to cut that. Now, I usually poke out my little pieces about every two or three times. So if I make a book, I'll probably go back and, you know, pick those little holes out just because I don't want them to accumulate. But you can see how the foam works. See, even with the foam, these little things are sticking in there. So you just want to make sure you, you know, take care of your dye and don't get those really jammed in there where you can't get them out. Okay, so now we have our covers. Yay. All right, I'm going to move this over here. Eileen, okay. we've got um, two quick questions that came in. Yes. Um, Diana's asking, if you didn't use that adhesive, would right. you use a glue stick or Elmer's glue? Well, I'm going to show you what I would use right now. What I would do is just repeat the step that I'm about to do when we go to put our napkins on. Okay. And for that, I use this decoupage glue. And you can use as many layers of that as you want. Um, let me just get all my stuff here. This is horrible. Sorry, I should have cleaned it. <laughs> but um here is my book, basically, and you can see it's got these score lines in here. Now, one thing that I didn't mention is you can make a skinny book by just chopping these extra tabs off. You know, if you just want a book that is that thin, you would cut these two tabs off and cut these two tabs off and overlap the single spine. 
but if you want to have a nice strong spine, you can overlap all three. But if you want it even larger, you can take it out to here and you would have a book that is that thick. So it's very adaptable. Um, you have a big so shot switch. Yes, you can use it in the switch. Um, yes, you might want to be a little careful about the score lines. Sometimes um, they press a little deep. So just, you know, be aware. There are things that you can do in that case. Um, and we talk about them on the uh, in the group. So if you want to join the Eileen Hall fan club, if you think this looks like fun, and it is, and we have a great group, we have about 8,000, almost 8,000 people. So if you want to help us get to 8,000, come on over and join. We have a great community there. All right, I'm going to do the three. So I'm just going to fold over. What I do is I take it, I lay it on the edge of the table because I want to give uh, even pressure when I'm bending this over, okay? I don't want it to kind of, you know, lift up here because mat board is basically three layers of paper or lots of layers of paper that, um, you know, if you put pressure over here, this could lift up and you don't want to do that. So let's just bend this over. So you can see this is how your book is going to look. Okay, so that's one layer of it. That's the base. We have the base done. All these holes match up. So we're going to glue that together when we're ready. And we're going to put elastic in it. So I got to get going because I'm talking too much as I knew I would. But I want to show you this. Um, and this is a really fun trick. I have this tape here. And sometimes it's a little bit tricky to get these layers apart of the napkins because you just want one let one ply of the napkins. Now see, this is a two ply. I didn't even have to use that. And I'm just gonna carefully lift this apart. And I don't throw out this other stuff. I use it for cleaning up or if I need a tissue, I use it. <laughs> it's very handy. It's just napkin. So now we have this pretty image. See that? Isn't that going to be pretty on my cover? So what I was thinking was, I'm going to take this center and I'm going to take that out and have this part, you know, peeking up over the top. Okay, that's my plan. So what I'm going to do, this is where I would use my water brush. Now this is just a, a brush here and it's filled with water. It's like a paintbrush. So if you don't have a water brush, you can use that. And I'm just gonna measure, but this is like made to order right here. And I really like that blue pumpkin. In fact, there's a member of our group and that's the name of her business, the blue pumpkin. So I'm just gonna go, um, actually I'm gonna take my thing and kind of trace over it. And you don't have to be careful. I'm just kind of doing a jagged line. I like that because I don't like a straight line. It looks too, I don't know. I'm a messy person. I like it to look messy. It's handmade, so it's got to look like that. But see how easy it tears? And you just go around it like this and separate the napkin. And it's really fun, too. And it's it's actually this summer... I was babysitting my grandkids and the youngest one is three and a half and she did a cigar box. We all covered this with uh, cigar boxes with napkins and she did a great job. I helped her a little. Okay, isn't that a pretty image? And there are other things that, you know, if you like that one better, you could use that. But look at, you have that whole space there that you can decorate with. Okay, so let's see how this works here that looks good <laughs> now you're not going to see this but it's going to come through when we decoupage it I may even move that down to this yeah I want to see more of that and we can always add like some pumpkins if we want around it from other napkins you can mix and match they don't have to be the same and this is pretty though we could use this 
maybe on the um, binding or on the back. So I'm not going to get rid of that. Now here's my glue. One thing is you want to make sure not to let that get caked up because it's hard to get it apart sometimes. Now I'm going to take my spatula. You can also use a brush if you want, a paintbrush, but you have to clean it off right away. So I really like using this spatula because I don't care about cleaning it. I just peel the glue off, which is actually kind of fun. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint this on first. Also, if there are any areas like right here, you can see how this is lifting up. Well, this is double and might just peel that off. If you feel it resist, just peel it. But if you have a space where it's not glued down, this is a glue and sealer. So just use it as you can for whatever you want. And I try not to put a really thick layer on coating on because it will take longer to dry. And you really just want to stick it down. So I covered that area. Now I'm going to leave a little bit of text down here. And I just want to kind of pat it down. A, a lot of people are like kind of, they want it to be perfect and not to have any, you know, wrinkles or anything. To me, the wrinkles are kind of part of the charm. So that doesn't bother me. But if you like it, then, you know, just lay it down really carefully and spread it out from the middle. But I just kind of lay it down and I think it all looks pretty. Don't worry if you have stuff going over the edge because I'll show you a really fun tip for fixing that. have to wait for it to dry a little bit. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. I mean, you just took like a napkin, which is, you know, like cost nothing and use the artwork on it to really pep up this cover here. Now, if you wanted to add a, um, like a title or something, you could do that. If you had a label, you don't have to just limit it to the napkin, you know, you can add other elements to it. Um, now over here, this is a little tricky going around a corner. So I kind of break it a little and press down and like here, you can pull it off if you want. But here, what I'm going to do is let it dry, and I'm going to sand it down, and it comes right off really easily. All right, so let's see. I didn't really have a plan for the back, but let's see. Actually, I have, these are from an older, another project that I've done. So let's see what's already cut out, because you saw how to do that. I think this bittersweet is really pretty. So we could do this on the back. And that's kind of cute, adventure, you know, just happened that way. Um, let's do a little of this on the back because the colors are similar. And I might think about this a little bit more if I was, really, you know, but I just really want to show you the technique more than anything. So, and you can just tear out, you know, where it fits. You could use your water technique again, but I think that's pretty. And it can go over on top of something you've already added. Never really patted that down, so let's do that. Just make sure you add the decoupage medium on top because otherwise it's going to bubble up and, you know, fall off because it is pretty delicate and some of these you know you do have to be a little careful because it's pretty fragile it's so pretty look at that see how this is what i love that you can see that text back there you guys have any questions it's really easy and i think people have been doing this for a while but the napkins are just getting more and more involved and, and beautiful, you know, so. Okay, and I do also use the decoupage medium to, you know, coat the rest of the book to seal it, because if you're using this, you don't want, if it's raining out, you know, you don't want it getting marks on it or, you know, looking bad. Now, this is the one that I used for my sample. So you can see how that looked before. So that's a big one. I don't usually use a big image like that, but 
you know, I like to use separate little ones, but I think that looks nice. So we have a front and back and you know what, let's just add this on here. Let's get a little color to the, oops, to the binding. If that is, now one of the bindings is gonna get covered. So hopefully it's not that one, but we can always add it after. And you know, if you, you know, come find something that strikes your fancy after you just add it on. It doesn't, doesn't matter. All right, now we have to let that dry for one minute, but this one here is almost dry. You know, that's another benefit to not adding a lot of the uh, mixture here, the, the matte medium, you know, if you only give a light coat, it takes not very long to dry. So let's, um, let's put that aside for a minute. And let's work on some pages to go inside the book. And how are we doing on time, Dana? Are we doing all right? We're at, I've got 1139 central on my clock. That's left? Oh, I'm so sorry. The, that's the time. We've got about 20, 25 minutes left. Okay. All right. Had a little heart attack there. <laughs> <laughs> but is there anything you wanted to say in the meantime or while I'm setting this up? Yeah. Yeah. This would be a good time for an intermission. I'll just talk about upcoming classes and um, an offer that we have for everybody who comes to our Favecraft Studio Live. So right. let me, let's see. I'm going to move our little bubbles off screen. Um, right. So, okay. So we've got two classes coming up for the rest of October. We have Stranded Knitting with Molly Conroy of the Hands-On Knitting Center. She taught a brioche class back in July. So if anybody in today's class also knits and you attended her class, you, you know she's a great teacher. She is back next week. Same time, um, same same place. So you can sign up for her class at Eventbrite, favecrafts.eventbrite.com. And then I'm teaching a crochet class at the end of October on Halloween, if you guys wanna pop in on Halloween, uh, to learn the crochet waffle stitch. And we'll also learn how to put a moss stitch border around the swatch that we make. So you'll have the tools to make a lovely coaster or blanket or dishcloth, which whichever you like. So that's coming up. Yeah, that's in three weeks. Yeah, two weeks, three weeks on Halloween. Um, same time, 11 a.m. Central. The Eventbrite sign up for that class is actually full already, but you can still sign up at Zoom. And I'll drop that link, both of those links in the chat uh, shortly. And then Everybody who attends our classes is uh, entitled to an introductory offer from our digital magazines. So we have three digital magazines. I like crochet, I like knitting, and we like sewing. And they're, they publish six times a year. And when you sign up, you get access to all of the previously published patterns. So that's the advantage of a digital magazine. The introductory offer is only $5 US for an annual subscription. And the links to sign up for those magazines, I'll drop those in the chat as well, but it's um, I like crochet.com slash virtual 23. It's all, it's all virtual 23 at the end. So I'll, I'll include those links below as well. And I think that's all I have to say for the intermission. I'll stop the screen share now. And then uh, let's see. Um, Eileen, two questions came in that we haven't addressed yet. So Susan was asked, she has a question about the dyes. She says, mm -hmm. when you cut, what happens if the score areas cut through the mat board? She's had that happen in the past and like, and she'd like to know some troubleshooting to yes. prevent. Okay. I can help you out with that. Um, there is a product called a crease pad uh, through Sizzix. And what that does is it gives a gentler cut. It's made out of, um, oh, I might have one right here. Uh, it looks like this and it's, this one is kind of messed up. I, I beat the heck out of them, <laughs> but this is what it looks like. So it's flexible. And when you run it through, it has something to kind of sink into and it just gives a gentler cut to your score line. So this might be something you wanna try. The other thing that you can do is you can take a piece of, let me just get my die out here. 
you can take a piece of like cereal box or felt, you know, thick felt or like leather scrap that you have. And when you go to cut, you put that down on the die and then you put your material that you're cutting on top. And what that does is it creates a buffer so that this, the layer that's closest to the die will absorb those cuts and then the top is fine. So, you know, that's what I do. The thing is the dies are, you know, they're a tool. If you may, if you cut something that's a little extra thick or a little extra thin, you're kind of uh, have to experiment a little bit and it's kind of fun to do. Uh, we do it in the group all the time. And if you have any questions like that, I invite you to join the Eileen Hall fan club because we will, if you have a question like that, we can go through and do a video on it, you know? And if you, if you have a question, I'm sure there's other people. So uh, I'd invite you to join, just answer the questions, please, if you wanna join. And, um, you know, so if you want me to do a video and show how to do that, we can do that over there. But yeah, that's, that's what I would recommend. And another question? Dana, was there another one? There was one. So Linda says she cannot get the deco art, um, oh. deco podge glue. Yeah. Uh, so she's asking for other recommendations. I mentioned Mod Podge and Matt. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other one. I know that some people use collage medium, I think you call it. I just don't have any. Um, these are what I have and they, they're easy to find. This I got in Dollar Tree, actually. So, oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, 25. It's a cute little size. I use that when I travel, but, um, you know, use what you have. You might have to experiment a little and see what works best for you, but uh, try, try different things. I mean, why buy it if you have it already, you know, I, I'm this just, just... Oh, okay. Some is saying Liquitex matte medium. Yeah. So, okay. So everybody has their own, you know, things they go to. Um, all right, well, let's get going on the pages, and we can also bind that book when we're when it's dry. Um, but I just wanted to show you a fun little trick to use with your six by six paper pads. Uh, I like to find ones that match, you know, kind of what the inside of my book looks like, and I think this is a really nice one. I also like that it's double sided, so I'm going to show you a fun way to use it that really is so quick and easy and it fits right in the book. So what I did was I take my pages. Now I trimmed off because they have, you know, that little hole. I made it to the six by six. And then I'm gonna go through and just score each page. Now, normally you go down three, you're gonna have pages that are all the same size. I'm gonna go to three and a quarter. I think I'm at three and a quarter. And I'm going to score that and I'm going to get kind of an irregular shape here, but we're going to use that to self bind the book. So let me just do a couple more and you can pick whatever side you like. Oops, wait a minute. I can't see. <laughs> that was three. There will be a, one left out. <laughs> um, the fun thing about this is <clears throat> you're, you know, you're basically, you don't have to, uh, Sorry, there's a glare right at three and a quarter. You, wait a minute. Let me just get this last one and then I'll try to remember what I was saying. <laughs> I don't remember, but all right. So I'm going to fold this up. The thing that I like about these is you can make as many pages as you want and you can always add on um, to your finished book or you could do separate signatures, however you want to do it. Okay, so now we have a pile of pages here, and I'll show you how I like to put it together. Uh, I think that's a pretty one for the front. So the way they're going to go together is like this, and we're going to make a pocket. So we're going to glue here and here, and that's going to be a place where you can put your little pages. Uh, or little journaling cards or photos or recipes, whatever you have. So these, the back of one and the front of one are always going to be glued together. Okay. So let's just, now they might be full page like that, or they could be, 
half page, half page, you know, the same size like this, you could do it like that. Or if, you know, this one doesn't really matter. So, you know, it's up to you, however you want to do it. I just want to get an order here so that now this one, you know, that's directional. So we kind of have to go like that. And so see, we don't see those pretty trucks either way. So we could flip it like that. You know, just adjust it to what you like. All right, that looks good. It will all be clear in one minute. I know this looks confusing. All right, so we have our first page and we are going to take our glue and I just got this cool gadget. Um, it's called the pre uh, Precision Glue Press. And you know what a pain it is that every time you have to like open the cap of your glue, put on um, the cap so it doesn't dry out. Well, this, it just sits in this little stand. And every time it's good. It just fires right up. Okay, so now we have a set of pages. So you could write on here, you could add little doodads, you could add some napkin decoupage, actually, and you also have this little pocket. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. We don't have to do all of them, but I wanted to show you how it goes together. It's so easy. And I do glue the smallest page because if you do the bigger one, sometimes you overshoot and then, oops, wait a minute. It too late. I didn't line that up right. I have to re glue. The trick is to keep the spine even, you know. So I usually go like that. I'm gonna have to glue that again. Sorry about that. But you might as well see what could go wrong so you don't do it. <laughs> Let me do it. Whoops. See, I, I went over. I think that's such a pretty little scene. It reminds me of New England. All right, so if we lay these right on the table here. All right, so, you know, keep these spines even this way and flat. And now we can add that. So you can see how it just keeps building on itself and makes its own little book, you know? waited too long. And if you have clips and you wanted to kind of press that down in between, you know, normally I would take a little more time doing this, but you get the idea. And you would just keep adding like that. And you've got this fun little book and that will go inside our journal. So let's go back to that because I really want to get that done. Tonight, um, I was telling Dana, if we don't finish now, uh, what, what I can do is uh, I have a live tonight on my channel, Eileen Hold Designs and on YouTube, I can finish the book over there. So if you want to see how, how this gets done all the way, you can come over and watch that. So what I'm going to do on the edges here, remember I said, if you go over, just take your sanding block or sanding tool or piece of sandpaper or whatever you have and just go around the edges and you can distress that if you like to distress you know with brown ink you can go ahead and do that however you want to do it oh see yep we're covering that up oh well um now this what i use here this is still a little bit wet but what i like to use is i've got this red liner tape remember how i said it's a strong heavy duty material so you need a heavy duty adhesive this is what i like to use this is in my etsy store if you need some uh, and i'm just gonna lay a line of tape over here now i could go like that but see i don't like how that looks sticking out from the edge of my book. So I like to wrap the cover around so that it flows nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my tape here and hopefully it sticks because it is wet, but 
don't cover the holes because that's going to be where we put the elastic. All right, I'll do one more. That'll fit. Yep. And then I've got a hole here. I might use that, but I might not actually. No, I'll leave it. But I would have to punch another hole anyway. This is for like a binding or um, something to keep the book together. You know, uh, like a you could take an elastic and put that through here and wrap it around the book. So you could use it for closure. I'm not haven't decided yet, but I'll know by tonight. <laughs> I'm going to end this. Uh, so let's. Yeah, my table is full of stuff. That guarantees. That project is in full swing. I've got a full desk. And I'm just going to lift this up here. And, you know, I'm using the materials that I have at my desk, but, you know, try what you have and see if it works. I think half the fun of creating is like experimenting and trying stuff and you know, don't be afraid to do that. You might discover some a new way of crafting. You never know. All right, now that one is too wet. Let me see if I can get it up here. If not, I'm just might leave that and just add some glue or peel this off and add glue. Thought about doing this ahead of time, but okay, that, that looks good. All right, so now. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take the holes here. It's kind of hard to see because it's busy, but I'm going to cover those holes, those holes, and I haven't pressed it down yet, but see how they line up? Now I'll press it down and I've got my book cover. Isn't that cute? I love it. All right. And if you have to kind of sand a little off, that's okay. You know, it's handmade. All right, let's quickly do the elastic, okay? So what you're going to do is I like to kind of give, there's three strands, and I do an extra as a guide. So this is 1.5 millimeter. This is a good kind of general size to use. All right, so I'm going to pull that through, and about halfway, I'm going to put my thumb right there, okay? Now, the thing to remember is you want all of your strands inside the book going up and down, and you want the ones on the outside to go across. So it's a captive. So I'm trying to do this so we can get done and see if you have any questions. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of threading it through these loops and going in a, you know, going that way. And then once I get to the end, I'm going to turn around and head back. Okay. Now here you can see I've got some gaps. So here I'm going to go back through that same hole. And sometimes I use a bamboo skewer. So the middle is going to have two holes, two um you know, strings, and on either side of that, you're going to have one. I cut way too much, as I always do. <laughs> but, and then you're going to tie it, okay? And that gives you four, room for four signatures. And I'm just going to do a knot here. Now, before I do that, I want to make sure, no, this is not tight enough, so I'm going to pull a little here and a little there, and just kind of you don't want it too tight because that's going to make it hard to get your signatures in, but you want it tight enough so it's not flopping around. Oh, it's still too loose. So what happens is sometimes I just leave my strings. I don't cut them off because then if I do need to adjust them, I can still do that and not have to you know, go crazy trying to tie it. 
tie this tiny little knot, <laughs> little piece slip. All right, so that's way too much. So I'm gonna, I think this is actually pretty good. You know, it'll hold it. So basically, I think that's good. The idea is you're going to take your book and actually let me use one. This is my sample book. Now for this one, I just took double-sided paper. I measured how wide I want it to be, folded it in half, and just put in pieces of paper from an old paper pad. And that's that's a great way to do it too. You can also put in like a calendar, but what you want to do is just slide this under there. So the reason I like that is a couple reasons. I don't even have to, you know, so stitch this book together to keep it together. I, you know, I can just let it because the elastic's going to keep it in there. So I can just leave these papers separate in case I want to change around the order. I want to add something in or take something out. I can just remove these pages without any problem. Um, this one is a little different how we did, uh, I'm trying to think if I, now see this one I did pages or um, pockets in here and I added some other size books. So that's more of a junk journal -y thing, but um, yeah, I, I don't have enough of this put together to show you, but what I would do is once I get like six pages, I would look through three and open this up and slide this in and you'd have the same idea. So like little folders, I did not do a good job. Of, well, this one's okay, <laughs> that one's good. So, you know, I just wanna make sure I get, get everything in in the hour. So Dana, how are we doing? Are we close? It's, it's right on the hour okay. at this point, yeah. All right, so why don't we end here? And if anybody wants, you have the idea of the construction of it. If you want to come over tonight to Eileen Hall Designs and watch how I finish this, you can. But I think that we got through most of how to put this together. And um, then, oh, there's these little charms. I just added this piece here and a couple charms on here to make it have a good sound. <laughs> so uh, how many pages per signature? As many as you want, Susan as many as work, works inside your book. You know, I usually do signatures of six and then you can do a couple of them in here, you know. And also here's like a calendar. So, you know, you can put that in, same idea or whatever you have. I can't see any more questions. Where do you get the glue dispenser? I got that at maymaymadeit.com. But I think you can put it anywhere. <laughs> She's my friend. So I ordered from her. Oh, good, Diane. Well, thank you. Well, I hope you give these dies a try, guys. They're really fun and they make it easy. They're great with kids. They're great for if you want to make like multiples of anything. You know, you just get your materials, you roll them through and crank out a bunch of them. And if you do craft shows, you know, sell them. They're really fun. Who doesn't need a notebook, you know? So um, thank you so much for coming. I hope you join the fan club, Eileen Hall fan club, answer the questions. If you need anything, go ahead over to Etsy, um, Eileen Hall Etsy shop. <laughs> like at these links here. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, I thought we were done. Okay. Oh, no, this is perfect. This is, this is what we end with um, pretty thank much you. each time. So yeah, I'll try to put our little windows here. But um, if folks have any questions for me about the classes, you can email me at dneal at primecp.com and visit Eileen and for her various social media, her Etsy stop, sh shop, get those napkins um, yeah. and the dyes, et cetera, the adhesive. Yeah, and yeah, it's at, it's the live is at 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern. Eastern. Yeah. So um, tune in later tonight. And I'm going to include that live link and the recap email that goes out tomorrow as well. So folks can thank tune you. in uh, as, as they have the time. So thank you again so much, everybody, for joining today. Thank you, Eileen, very much for teaching today's class. It's oh, so, it was so soothing to watch somebody work. It's awesome <laughs> I like that too. thanks everybody for coming and thanks to uh dana and fave Krauss for having me absolutely all right have a good one
Bye.